Welcome to the Story Lab. This week we're talking about commitment while we take a look at a word picture so good, you might just say it's enlightening. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about commitment, which is making a plan and putting it into practice. It looks like you're practicing something. Well, I thought it would be awesome to revisit a sport this summer, like rock climbing. Stupendous. Right? My first time climbing was so awesome, I went for hours. But the next morning, I could barely lift my fork. Sore arms, huh? <sighs> I gotta do some training. Yeah. But to be honest, I don't really know what I'm doing. Well, you're in luck. It just so happens that I know someone who knows a lot about training. Oh. Yeah, his name is Samuel, and his sport is soccer, and he is joining us right now. Hey, come hey on guys. in. Hey, guys. Hey, Samuel, we are so excited to have you I'm here with us today. So happy to be here, Zeke and Carter. So excited for what we have today. Well, we want to learn how you train to be so good at soccer. Yes, like for starters, how did you get started playing soccer? My two cousins, they're the ones that really introduced me to soccer. So ever since then, I got to play with them, be part of their team, and from then, it was a lot of fun. What do you enjoy most about playing soccer? Well, I love playing soccer because when you're out there on the field, it really does feel like you're out there being free. Um, you get to be part of a team. It feels like you guys are working all together towards one goal. And it's really a lot of fun being able to make tackles, being able to kick the ball, make passes. I have a blast every time. So would you say that getting good at a sport involves a lot of training? Oh, definitely, definitely. I would say it involves a lot of training because it's something that takes repetition. You know, you gotta go out there and practice, make sure you're, you're honing your skills, make sure that you're keeping up your endurance, definitely things like that. So I would say it takes a lot of training. So why is training so important? That's a very good question. Training is important because you want to build up your muscles to get stronger. If you go out there and you're not really training, you might get hurt. So that's something you want to avoid, you know? Uh, training also, it helps you because it keeps your skills consistent. And so if you're not training, you might lose a little bit of those skills. You know, as I'm getting older, I feel like I'm losing some of those skills sometimes. So it's important to keep the training up. Yeah. So how is soccer still a part of your life? Soccer is so important because it brings me back to that, that feeling of being part of a team. Like I said, being with my cousins out there on the field. It feels like I'm part of a community again. So I love playing soccer for that reason. Well, you have that soccer ball. Do you think you can show us anything? Well, I think I could pull out a move or two. Yes, awesome. Please, please show us. <laughs> Amazing. That was incredible. <laughs> thank you guys, man. I love how training has become such a big part of your life. Yes, and thank you so, so much for sharing all this amazing stuff with us. Of course, guys. Thank you guys for having me, Zeke and Carter. It's been so much fun. Yes, I am so excited to start training for real now. And I'm also slightly intimidated. You sure shed some light on the whole training process. Speaking of light, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the book of Psalms. Long before there were high-tech lyric and dance videos for worship, there were the Psalms. For thousands of years, the Psalms were the main songbook of God's people, the Israelites. The individual songs, or Psalms, were composed over many years. About half of them were written by King David. Some Psalms are songs of praise or thanksgiving to God. Others share wisdom, and many are cries for help in a tough situation. In every case, the Psalms speak truth about who we are and who God is. There are 150 Psalms, and the very longest is Psalm 119. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Erica. Psalm 119 is the longest chapter in the entire Bible. We don't know for sure if King David or someone else composed the psalm, but we do know they wrote it in a very cool way. See, 
there are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet and 22 sections, or stanzas, of Psalm 119. And guess what? Each stanza starts with a different letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It's what we call an acrostic. The psalm starts out like this. Blessed are those who live without blame. They live in keeping with the law of the Lord. Over and over, Psalm 119 shares how valuable and beautiful God's words are. They are said to be sweeter than honey and better than thousands of pieces of gold and silver. In verse 105, the psalmist writes, Your word is like a lamp that shows me the way. It is like a light that guides me. That is an amazing word picture. But to understand it, you need to put yourself in the sandals of someone from the psalmist's time. See, for most of us, light is really easy, even if it's dark outside. All you have to do is flip a switch and voila! All the light you need. But... At the time the psalmist was writing, there was no electricity. On days when there was no moon, when it got dark, it got dark. There were no street lights or bright lights from cities or towns. It was, can't see your hand in front of your face dark. Can you imagine trying to go anywhere at night? It's pitch black and all you can do is guess where to put your foot for the next step and Hope it's not a nest of poisonous vipers. Lights, please. Thankfully, people did have oil lamps. Now, this may not seem like a lot of light to us, but to people with no electricity, this was the most beautiful warm glow, especially on a moonless night. By this light, you could see where it was safe to put your foot. You could see which way to go when you got to a turn in the road. In the same way, the psalmist wrote that God's word can be like a light, showing us how to make wise choices when things in life seem dark and confusing. We live in a broken world. Whether your life seems really great or kind of hard right now, you will face tough decisions. You will deal with difficult things at school or home. But God's word, the Bible, is always available to help you make the wise choice. Maybe your friend tripped you by accident and you're really mad. We find in Ephesians, be kind and tender to one another. Forgive one another just as God forgave you because of what Christ has done. Or maybe your little sister is driving you nuts asking to play and you just want to yell at her. But we read in James, everyone should be quick to listen, but they should be slow to speak they should be slow to get angry. The very best way to make God's word a light in your life is to make God's word a part of your life. Read it, memorize it, talk about it. The more God's word shines like a lamp in your life, the more it will shine through you to light the way for those around you. The end. I, for one, am thankful we now have these instead of these. <laughs> Bright light is a lot easier to come by these days, but we still need the light of God's word just as much as the psalmist did. So what's our part in the story? Great question. God's word can shine a light on everything in our lives that is hard and confusing, but that only happens when we practice hearing from God. Like with our ears? Some people have actually heard God's voice out loud, but usually God doesn't speak in a way we can hear with our ears. The best place to start is where the psalmist starts, with God's word. The Bible. Exactly. You can make it a habit to listen on an app, read it online, or make notes in your own Bible. When you ask God for help, God can make those words come alive for you and cause certain words and ideas to stand out to you. As we read, we can see how Jesus lived and follow his example. And you can memorize verses too, when God can bring those words to mind right when you need them. Another way to hear from God is through wise people who love you and love Jesus. They can share with you the wisdom they've learned from God. It could be your parents, a small group leader, or even a coach. Exactly, that's right. 
And God can also speak directly to your heart and mind through words and images, especially when you take time to be quiet. It might just be a thought that seems wiser or, or kinder than what you usually think, or a creative way to solve a problem. How do I know it's not just me? Well, practice. And if you aren't sure if what you're hearing is from God, it's a great idea to ask a grown-up who is following God too. Sometimes that's hard for me to wrap my head around. I mean, the God who made the whole universe wants to talk to me? Mind blown. You got it. Just takes a little patience and practice. See you next time. <laughs> so here's the thing. Practice hearing from God. That's one of the most important things to practice if you want your faith to grow. But you can also practice other things too. I thought you were gonna train for rock climbing. Well, after talking to Samuel, I kinda wanna try soccer now. Well, show me what you got. Ready? Yeah. Well, you want me to show you how it's done? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think we need to get Samuel back in here. Uh, sure. Well, thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you next, next time. time. Oh, you want to practice more? Yeah, but where'd it go? How are we going to practice that? Oh. Want to practice more? Absolutely. Okay, ready? One, two, three, four. Four. Oh. New record.